<laughs> hey everybody! Welcome to your standard Saturday night. Wait, Tuesday. Wednesday. Mm, let's go with. Today's the day. Oh, Kim's gonna kill me. I didn't message her before this. Sorry, Kimmy. I love you. I love it's you. Too late. Mm. Sorry. Hey guys. So we thought we'd better get on and do our live. Um, because we're going to summarise two days, we didn't do one, do, didn't do one yesterday because we had a friend's catch up last night, so we decided that was more important. Everything in its time. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing is, is being okay with what is, and then if you can do it, you can do it, if you can't, you can't, and be okay with that. Um, so the first topic for today is, how hard do you work for the things that you want? Hmm. So it's an interesting, interesting topic. There's a whole lot of this, and this can go into this absolute massive conversation because we're consistently taught uh, through our whole lives to work hard to get results. And from much practice of it, I've found that it's not all about work hard. It's sometimes doing these things on purpose, making decisions on purpose, living on purpose, mm. but doing everything as if the next moment is no better than this one and taking pride in this moment. So doing it purposefully, doing it presently so that every time you do something, you're living those successful moments and the destination is equally as, as important as the journey. Mm -hmm. That being said, we've all worked very, very hard in our lives. I've, I've bust my ass extremely hard in a whole lot of things and I've got a shitty back to cop to uh, for those reasons. So there's mm -hmm. this whole point I think we both stand here as we are. We are very young compared to most people that we probably talk to and most people mm. that we're probably watching. And um, I think both of us have realised that that life of working hard, you know, the, dream, the dream we were told as children, go to school, finish school, come out, work, 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 achieve, and then live a good life. But I kind of feel like that was wrought in the, uh, wrought in the system. Yeah. Where we were told that this is what you had to do, so we did it. And, and I mean, you've worked so hard that you've now got severe back problems and disc de de degeneration, and degeneration actually is completely stuck. There's no coming back from it. So it's, it's realized, and then me, like I've, I've worked my whole life, multiple jobs at once, trying to do enough, be enough, make enough, have enough. And I think we've both been like, enough. Like, there's, there's a massive think, amount of, of that, that knowing that whatever you're doing, if, this was your last moment, is this what you want to be doing? If, and this is that whole point, we've all busted our ass, and I'm not saying not to work hard because there is definitely a time for everything. Yeah. That being said, I feel like if we attempt things from a place of ease with a calmer mind and do them more strategically, more plan, or, or when anything you do present, mm. we're going to achieve it a whole lot easier. Mm. And when you get to that destination, as we said yesterday, there's this point of the way you, you attempt your journey is going to play a big part in how you feel when you get there. Yeah, agree. And I think something with, uh, I think I feel like I'm more congruent with the epigenetic work I've been teaching for the last five years now more than ever because I now sit there and when I choose to do work, I actually now go, cool. So my genetics actually require for me to get up slow, be methodical in my morning, go around the house, clean and tidy everything, make sure my environment is actually well organized, then actually plan the tasks at which I need to get done, plan my day, then have a bit of movement and a bit of downtime to clear my space, my mind, and, and, and do the things, and then get into doing the work. And that's actually quite often after physical activity, just after a late lunch. And then, so I'm actually getting into my hyperdrive, hyperproductive mode between 4 and 9 p.m. is mm. when my body and brain are like let's do this but for many they do it first thing in the morning and that might be true for their biology and it might not be but what I realized in doing this work is that society's got us all kerfuffled everyone is pushing so hard I'm not okay with my floppy hair everyone's pushing so hard right now to be um, all this stuff in society, but what if there was a biohack where you could actually understand when your body does the things best so that you can forget the rest and just show up as you in your best form and be okay with, you know what, I actually don't work till night time because my body and brain are better then. Then maybe that's actually what you might want to do or might be able to do. Um, but to be honest, it's only now that we have this lifestyle that I've actually been able to fully step into this space and go, wow. 
this is actually my biology at its best. Like yeah. people have been making comment about my, my figure, about my energy, about my persona at the moment. And it's been because I finally have let go of society's dictation upon my life. And I'm fully stepping into a space of when is my flow time to be productive? Um, I've now got on top of nearly all of my work. I had what I call the diplomat production list which is six months old of my, my to-do list that should have been done six months ago. Yeah. But that's actually okay. And I'm okay with the fact that I've allowed myself a bucket load of time to get the thing done, things done. And if I don't get them done, then I don't have to. And right now, I'm actually just finished doing out a script for Tilly, who's coming to see me on Monday, and do design and branding with me with my wardrobe. And I giggled as I was doing it, because I was like, so I'm doing all this stuff as to what I should be looking like and what I should be dressing like. And um, I'm laughing because I'm like, but I'm not yet working and I'm not yet getting back into that space. But I want to know. So I think it's, it's really interesting where I was coming to for that was that working hard for the things you want, that's a bullshit story. And people seem to do it from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed. But my perspective on this from epigenetics is that we all have small windows there's only one, if we were to break every human fits into one of six physicality, body, pheno, health types, and only one of that six can work prolonged hours with their brain, creating methylation and all the rest of it. Only one of six has this all day strategy where they're actually functional and can do it. And it will only be for a certain period of time and then their body's gonna crash and burn and then they have to start again. So if it's one in six, then what are the rest of us doing? Potentially living out of balance and out of flow and harming ourselves day in, day out with this whole work hard mentality. Definitely, definitely. On that note, I, I ask the question is, why are you doing it? We have this work hard for the things you want. Why do you want them? Mm. Why do you see you that what you're going to achieve? Hey, Dad, <laughs> why do you... Ass- think that getting to there is going to make you happier mm-hmm. why do you think that being more successful or financially successful or having the business having the empire why do you feel like that's what you want mm. for no reason there's no there's no detrimental no judgment. or judgment to any of this i'm just asking the question to see whether that is what you really want because i feel like so many of us go through our life thinking we want this we want that we want the other and without stopping to take a look at whether it was really our dream or society's dictation of what we should do to be successful mm. now the dalai lama said this very very well and i'm not going to even attempt to say it as well as he did but essentially it was along the lines of what surprised him most about man is that he sacrificed his health to work and to make money and he works so hard that he has to when he gets older sacrifice his money to maintain his health and he lives each day having never really lived, but lived as if he was never going to die. Mm. Now, it was something along those lines. My point with that and what I find interesting is so many of us do it. We bust our ass, as I said, I know I've done it. Mm-hmm. We bust our ass hoping that the next moment is somehow going to be better than this one. Yeah. That's just not true. You might not even live long enough to have that next moment. Mm. We should have all learnt this by now that we are all going to die. You keep getting the scare factors and the fear from the government because basically they're telling you you're going to die and you're not immortal. Well, the truth, that's the truth. You are not immortal. You are not going to live forever. And so yes, what I'm saying in this yeah. is damn well live and find the way to do it. Live now. Find the way to do it. Find a balance in there. We keep talking about balance and presence. Find a balance because essentially you should still pay your bills just in case you don't you do live to tomorrow. But try and make the best out of every situation. And if you can't, if you're not happy with the situation, try and change it. Mm. If you can't change a situation, change your mind. Change your mind <laughs> or learn to accept it. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a mind. way that no matter how painful something actually is, there is things that we don't have a choice in in life. Where somehow we've got to a spot that you just got to grit your teeth and bear it. But then it gritting your out. teeth you don't have to do that you can do it with a smile on your face we keep saying this you can grit your teeth and bear it but the truth is you can actually take on this this situation and go do you know what my car blew up today it wasn't a big deal i, I cracked the engine at the head on on uh, our car a couple of days ago mm-hmm. and i rang shana i was like oh she said do you want me to come pick you up and i'm like no nah, i'll have a look at it i'll just do my thing you know i've, got, I've got a i've got to go to the chiropractor most people would have lost their shit about that because it was potentially not a whole lot of fun. But what's the point? 
how is that going to help me physically, mentally, and in any way, losing your shit and gaining a whole lot more stress? It's done. Mm. I can't actually change what's done. I can work out a, a better way to fix it or a way to can it, give it to someone else, drive it into a creek. Because you stress, you can't think clearly. When you're stuck in those emotions, we are very powerful beings and we can create our own torture and our own prison. And unfortunately, so many of us get into that that flow state, that state of imprisonment, we become addicted to it. And then we have mm-hmm. no understanding of how to do life without that. Well, we it is addictive. They cortis- but cortisol is, is addictive. And yeah, people really. get into that state because, and, and then begin to crave it because it creates a feeling of pressure. And a lot of people get this feeling of, I've got to be pushing. And when I have that feeling, I know I'm achieving. That's not true. That's not true. And it no. does not help you out in any way. And it doesn't help serve you. So the whole point with what we're saying here is when should you work hard to get the things you want? Quite often, you're going to attract what's at the forefront of your mind. If you want to get better at something, do more hours, but do it joyfully. Mm. If, it, if you want to be the best in the world, do more hours. Do more than everyone else is doing. You want to be the best race car driver? Find out how many hours the best is doing and do more. Yeah. So there's this whole point of that, but it's not necessarily about working harder. No. Smarter and more present. Mm. And you'll find that the best in the world, whenever they're doing whatever they're doing, I don't care what it is, whether they're uh, an electrician, whether they're a basketball player, whether they're a... I don't know, golf player, they are completely present in that state when they're achieving. Mm. So my, my note to that is if you want to achieve and you want to do things well, put it at the forefront of your mind and be present while you do it. Yeah. So what are the things you... Uh, so what, how, uh, how hard do you work for the things you want? As little as possible as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, on, and, on, yeah. and, and do, it, do it in a way that is joyful and remember your brain is the one that's going to create the sorrow the joy the sacrifice the fun or whatever it is you choose to have in that moment that is your mind and your belief system that is creating that experience so what's your thoughts there's another quick note on that um Tara Stiles talked about this really well uh in one of her books and it was really great and that she was using a basketball player as an example um because it's about not working hard. Now you're trying to achieve, and the, and obviously playing basketball, you want to get, you want to put the ball through the hoop. Anyway, you watch the best, and they are not completely tense when they take that shot. They're not. Their whole body's not tight, and they're not fighting for it. Not it rigid. looks complete flow. They do that only the muscles that they need to use are firing and at exactly the right time. They're not going. Oh, get tense and do this. They just do it because they're completely present in that moment and in that flow state. And enjoying it. it. And yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, so if you're tense and rigid, life's gonna be hard. Yeah. Food for thought. Um, and then the second point we had was, um, what was the last thing you were really excited about? And I think we kind of act like kids a lot and we, we have these moments where we're like, I can't believe our life. We get excited about every day. Yeah. I'm just genuinely grateful for the life we live. Um, and I, I, when we make decisions every day to maintain the life that we have, that being said, we're generally great, genuinely grateful for it. Mm-hmm. And there's that whole space that, not just that, we, we get excited and I'm trying to ingrain in children and in myself and, and all of us to just take joy in the small things. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of big things that we get excited about, for sure. Mm. But I'll tell you what, there's 10,000 more small things that you should be grateful for every day. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we, we literally... Um, well, one thing I do get excited about is the music festival. Yeah, yeah. I love dancing, and I love to be around people who are fully present, fully in their moment, fully in their space of joy, and just so open and so... Um, expressive in that moment and you can see them connecting to the sound connecting to their to their essence and just so openly vulnerably being in that bliss that to me is what I get excited about okay. and why do you get excited about that because I see people in their beauty and their bliss and deeper I, oh because it matches mine and deeper than that oh where are you going with it what what do you feel present what? Present. And yeah, this is the thing. Present. Fully present. All of us. We get excited about all the different things, but all of us do all of the same things for the same damn reason. We keep coming back to this. And when you experience properly, you know it. You know the things that you get excited about because when you're there or when that state's coming, you of course there's that anticipation. 
but because you get the opportunity to be fully present in that state. Mm -hmm. So this is the, essentially all of it, there's so many things we get excited about. We, we got excited about moving and that was a big change was a big and coming thing. here. That was massive. Because knowing that even though there's all that mess around it, which is build and whatnot, then when you get there and you get that time to come, you've got that complete presence. Changes, we always get excited about and generally when we do changes. We get excited about friends coming over, we get excited yeah. about like we do dinner parties, like I've got the sip and swap coming up soon that I've created. Like we get excited about bringing humans together and celebrating our humanness and celebrating our inner child together. Like we try and do events where people come and fully drop into a space of just being themselves and knowing that they are all welcome. As long as they are present and as long as they are happy to be in their greatest self-expression and be and feel safe in that, that excites me so much mm -hmm. every day. If I catch up with a friend and they're fully in their, their energy and fully in their happiness, that excites me. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And, and, and I think that's the thing is when we surround ourselves with really good people, every interaction is an exciting interaction. I look forward to them. When something's hard work and something's heavy and something feels off, you feel it and you don't you do. enjoy those experiences. Energy is so contagious and quite often you meet with people, you see people and you just, you ask this question, you're like, are you okay? Because you, in honesty, you can feel that contagious energy. It's not even from something they've said. People just have that energy and you go, oh, it's heavy. It feels yuck when you're around it. So yeah, we get excited when you have someone that comes around that's got a good energy because I'm going to steal a little bit of it. It's nice to steal people's good energy and borrow well, it and... But when you're all on the same wavelength and you're all on the same energy, you're not really stealing it, you're actually amplifying yes, each other. The word. And it's it produces itself um, like a virus. <laughs> it produces, it spreads, it manifests, it grows, it, it amplifies, it, 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 it magnifies everything that's great. So your what's inside of you will in will show up in your life. So I think when you can be the beacon of that with everything, with work, with people, with the things that you're looking forward to and creating, that's what you're bringing about. So I think right now the best thing to say would be take stock of what's going on around you in your life and around your life and with the people around your life. Like, What are you noticing? Does it feel good? Do you feel excited? Do yes. you feel wholesome? And if not, start there's doing nothing... Start doing more things that give you joy. Start doing more things, start changing things. but. You are the one that has created that situation, that belief, that awareness, that lifestyle. You are the only one that can change it. It is no one else's responsibility. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, day before, day. Yeah. about balance and about, I said, you know, if you want to have a better, better lifestyle, better health, start looking at the ratios you do things in. I'm going to tell you to find out, again, to have a look at the ratio you do in your life for things that make you happy. If you've got a shit job and sometimes, you know, uh, it's, what's the word that I'm looking for? Mundane. Well, it's mundane, but you have that step point where the, um, uh, it's to get from one place to another. It's, you know, the thing that I'm looking for. Yep, I do. It's not going to come to me. It's not going to come to you? Someone will sit there and yell on the screen. It's, it's uh, like... Um, uh, mm, it's, oh God. When, you, when you're doing one thing just to get to the next. Um, obli obligation? Mm. Obligatory? Anyway. When you, when you when you are in this space where you have no option but you've just got to do it to get to the next point or you've got to do it sometimes if you're in one of those jobs and you're spending 40 hours a week to what a choice eh? did he use the answer means to an end he's a good man that's, that's what I was looking for yeah. phrase. good man thank you hey Troy I'm glad you're watching what is this hey Kimmy sorry with the messaging we, we, well. we realise we're going to get told off after this for not messaging you first so if you're doing something that just seems like a means to an end and sometimes we have to do these things Start looking at the ratio. If you're doing 40 hours a week of shit that's a means to an end, start pumping up the numbers of shit you want to do that's good for your life because this is why you end up getting depressed. You end up looking back and going, fuck, I wasted another full day doing bullshit. So when you finish work, if you're doing that and you go, I've got to do this for six months, to save blowing your brains out in between times, why don't you find a way on the way home, why don't you listen to some music, pump up something you want to do, go swimming, go racing, go do whatever you've got to do. But look at the ratio. Everything is energy and frequency. We actually do studies of this and we actually use this as, as a presentation when we're talking to businesses around um, epigenetics and uh, workplace health and safety. Um, is that so 
Have you ever been in a room and you may have experienced in some kind of way, but I'll give you a scenario that you'll, you'll be able to morph it into whatever you've had. But say you've got an office full of people and this gentleman over here is sitting at their desk, they're probably quite a sensitive person, they've got a lot going on, they just want to do their job. Person over here is loud, clunky, and annoying and noisy. This person over here is raging. This person over here is in a shit fit. They're not dealing, they're projecting. Our force field, our energy that each one of us puts off will affect those around you for a good mm -hmm. couple of meters. So, and, and in a room, in a building. So, remember that you are a beacon or a transmitter of your energy and force field. So this person over here is having a shit day. This person over here just wants to get their job done finish it perfectly, get through their processes, and go home to whatever they have going on. The person with their back to this person can still feel it. And you can have monitors on each of those people, and the person here in their own business trying to do their own thing will be catastrophically, energetically, emotionally, and mentally affected by this person over here, without even with their back turned to them. Could even be in a cubicle beside them, and they will still be getting highly affected. So just remember that you are creating an energy force field within you and around you. So what you are producing and creating and attracting is your fault, mm -hmm. is your ability and your creation and your responsibility to self-monitor. So choose wisely what you do and what you be and how you think and how you Definitely. breathe and you, you choose. Because Everything it's all affecting not just you. If you have children, if you have a husband, if you have a relationship, if you have yes. a if I'm work, projecting that bullshit. Yeah, if, and you have work. Like all of these environments are your responsibility is the energy and the frequency of which you are and which you yeah. produce. So just check in with yourself frequently. What are you being? What are you attracting? Because it's your responsibility. And together, this is how we can change the world. Together, understanding what supports your body, your biology, your emotions, mm -hmm. your mental standpoint is actually very different to anybody else. And so many people, I, I've, I've spent five years working with people where they have tried to sit there and run template after template of society's bullshit and wondering why they're still lost and out of touch with themselves. Yeah. The noise and the chaos will not serve you. And at some point you need to stop let go of it all and come back to the truth, which is not your spirit or your soul, my loves. It is your biology. You're in a biological experience right now. And yes, you have a soul. Yes, you have a spirit. Yes, you have an energy. But stop spiritually bypassing this experience right now yeah. and start understanding what your biology is capable of, what your biology needs, because you are a very unique individual and no one should be taking that from you. Your frequency and energy was given a unique blueprint and I wish to God people would understand your source, your being was meant to be here in all of its wholeness and frequency to be transmitted into this world and given all of its power and presence right now, especially now with everything that's going on in the world is when we need to come back into our sovereign biology and create a stand and create your space in this world. Ooh, that was a transition thing. <laughs> so there's one side note. We're talking about things we get excited about. And our words are very powerful. They're spells, they're that all sorts spells. of things. When we get excited about anything, be careful about spending and getting excited about the, all of the things in the future. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I say that is, what do we say when we are excited about something in the future? I can't wait. Or, I am looking forward. Now, we consistently say, I'm looking forward to this. Mm. So what are you doing? Trying to speed up the time to get to that destination, first of all. Mm. But not only that, you're consistently living and thinking in the future. And what happens when you live in the future? Anxiety. Anxiety is not something we want. Even if it's for a good thing, you're living in the future and you're training your brain to class the next moment is better than this one and live there. So it's great to know those things are there and go, yep, I... I and shocking for doing this. Um, I when I travel, I go, oh yeah, I'll look at my tickets, I'll book my tickets and go, yep, yep, and then I'll forget about it. Yeah, I do this too. This so I funny. will completely forget about it and it comes to some time go, so what time do you fly at? No, I don't know. I've done it before and I've pulled out my tickets and I've gone, actually today, so I'm going to have to pack my bag, drive five hours so that I can get to where I'm going and get to the airport because oh shit, I didn't realise. Now, that makes it a whole lot, a whole lot more exciting in the moment.
But if I was checking those tickets daily and going, I must remember this, I must remember to pack this, I must remember to pack that, I'm living in an anxious state of being. Not everyone has, is capable right, of that just doesn't doing this. Really. Doesn't work for everyone. <laughs> but my point is, in that matter, everything's going to work out how it's meant to be anyway. And if you don't forget your wallet, you're going to be okay. You're going to have, you're going to have your wallet, Ken. I hope he does send it. He doesn't leave his wallet and we don't do seven hours extra traveling to go back for it. It's okay. But my point with all of that is be careful the wording you use because we consistently say this, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to. Stop training your brain to Stop live in the future. Stop wishing away your time. And that's exactly the thing. We consistently make the next moment somehow better than this and it's not. The joy and the power is in the now. Mm. And I just got to stay. So, it's just the start. Yeah. Right. That's all. Cool. That's it. I think we've done everything there. Right. Peace. Peace out. Until tomorrow night. See maybe. You on the flip side. Can't maybe. guarantee, but we'll try.